This is a record store. They call it that, I suppose, because they used to sell a lot of these things, mechanical storage devices, basically. Then they started selling a lot of these magnetic storage devices, and now they sell a lot of these optical storage devices. What happened with music is happening with data, from punch cards to magnetic discs to optical storage. Today, we take a look at optical storage devices from interactive video discs to CD-ROMs on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association. Additional funding is provided by Byte Magazine and VIX, the Byte Information Exchange, by PC Connection and Mac Connection, and by Intel Corporation, Personal Computer Enhancement. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee, and this is Gary Kildall. Gary, I think the CD-ROM drive has finally arrived. So. <laughs> you see this little baby? This is a portable CD-ROM drive. Runs on battery. You can carry it around with your laptop. Have all that mega storage. We see it as the L drive right here on PageMaker. Lots of TIFF graphic files sitting on there that I can use inside PageMaker. Gary, I want to ask you, we tend to think of the CD-ROM drive from a hardware point of view as being very expensive, but from a software point of view, it's very inexpensive, isn't it? Well, it is. It's, uh, well, for one thing, it's a publishing medium, which is something we haven't had in, in small computers before. Uh -huh. And if we take a look at the drive, of course, it's an it's a audio drive basically fixed up to hook up as a, mm -hmm. as a computer peripheral. But if we take a look at this piece of plastic, uh, well, you know, it can't be more than 10 cents to Not make too it, right? right? And with that, you can store uh, thousands of pictures yeah. um, and even some live video that we're going to be seeing today. So from the standpoint of a publishing medium, it's very, very inexpensive. Gary, we'll see a variety of optical storage devices today, and one of them, interactive video discs. There's a new permanent exhibit just opened in Washington on interactive video disc applications, and we're going to begin with a report on that exhibit. There are enough fascinating laser disc applications here at Tech 2000 to make you wonder how you ever got along without an optical storage peripheral plugged into your computer. The applications range from educational to practical to whimsical. This hypercard application on the Macintosh uses CD-ROM with audio to study Beethoven. You can listen to any specific portion of the music, see real-time annotation, and even look at the score as the music plays. This is an interactive course on Van Gogh using hypercard and laser video discs. You can get text, full motion video and sound, and a complete video library of the works of Van Gogh. This sculpture program lets you visit and examine the great works of Henry Moore on display at the Tate Gallery. You can change the lighting on the piece. You can zoom in for a close-up view or change the angle of viewing. This program also runs under HyperCard using a laser video disc. This program uses a PC interface developed by Sony called the Info Window. The system includes magnetic storage, CD-ROMs, and laser video discs. The program teaches the English language to Japanese businessmen. This IBM system, called Speech Viewer, is designed to teach the speech impaired. It uses laser disc hardware and speech recognition software. By offering visual feedback, the user learns how to properly pronounce vowels or how to raise and lower pitch. This kiosk contains an IBM PS2 and a Pioneer laser disc player. The interactive program teaches young people about drugs and alcohol. You can role play at this party where you have to choose what to drink and then deal with the consequences. Many of the applications use touchscreen technology to provide a simple and intuitive interface. To explore various rooms in this house, you just touch the doorknob and in you go. Want to see that insect in the display case? Just touch it and there it is, with information on what it does. It's the ultimate intuitive educational adventure game. One main feature of optical storage devices is their ability to randomly access information. This program turns a linear presentation, like a PBS Nova documentary, into an interactive resource library for an educational children's game about turtles. 
And if you don't like the way ABC is putting together their documentaries, with this application you can create your own documentary. Ted Koppel. This is side one of an interactive video disc examining the turmoil in the Holy Land. Put the pieces together in any order you like and get additional background information. This application called the Image Bank solves the problem of trying to find the right picture out of a photo gallery of 42,000 shots. Tell the program what mood you want, what setting or lighting you want, and it almost instantly pulls up a subset of photos that match your description. Finally, if CDI, DVI, CDA, and CED don't have you confused enough, this is yet another optical standard called CD plus G, meaning compact disc audio plus graphics. You can hear the music and see the lyrics. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel. Joining us in the studio now is Richard Enriquez with Head Start Technologies, and next to Rich is Robert Wilson, General Manager of Sony Peripheral Systems Company. Gary. Bob, as uh, PC users, we're all used to magnetic storage devices and hard disks and floppy disks and so forth. Right. Um, but uh, certainly the optical storage has had a lot of attention in the last few years, and of course Sony's been a primary uh, mover in that. Uh, tell us a little bit about the different kinds of optical storage that people are dealing with. Right now we're talking about 12-inch write once, which is a writable optical disk, and rewritable, which is writable but has the ability to erase the data once it's written. You've got a couple examples right there, don't you, Bob? Maybe you could show that to us while we're talking. Yes, about I do. It. This is five and a quarter inch rewritable, and it has 650 megabytes, and it's optical laser disc, and is written to with an optical laser pickup block. But the interesting thing is that you can erase the tracks or the sectors and rewrite the new data. It's on really it. closest to what we'd think of as a standard uh, magnetic disc. Very close, sense. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the 12 and inch worm? is a larger diameter, therefore has much more capacity, 6.5 gigabytes. And because it's right once, it has 100 years archival life. So the applications are very different. Mm -hmm. OK. Now, uh, we have uh, also, uh, Rich, a, a new computer, Head Start. And it uh, employs a, a CD-ROM drive as well. Can you tell us a little bit about why you selected a CD-ROM drive as a part of your equipment? We felt that CD-ROM would be the new technology in the 90s, according to different statistical programs we had looked at. And we see being the wave of the future. That's why we're going with it. Head Start always wants to be the leader in hardware. Okay, well show us a little bit about what you can do with Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going into here Grillier's Encyclopedia. It asks me to insert the CD and it's already been inserted. It's now scanning the CD. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a word search on Japan. So you're searching inside the encyclopedia yeah, exactly. off the CD-ROM. Exactly. Now what it's doing, it tells me there's 674 articles about Japan, and the word Japan occurs 1,358 times. So now it's viewing all the titles we have on Japan. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the one up on Japan. Now I can hit Alt-Z, and I can expand the screen. I have an article I highlighted, which was mm -hmm. Japan. Now what, is, what are some of the applications that you see, important applications now for a Head Start and a CD-ROM? Um, we see Grillers Encyclopedia being a really big advantage with the machine. Microsoft Bookshelf, the Thesaurus, American Heritage Dictionary. And um, we have various statistical programs that can give you different demographics on various areas. Mm -hmm. And that's the way we see it going. Well, what user different. is this Head Start machine aimed at? Is this a well, it's really an open market. We see really going with a business application for small business and also an educational market with Grillers and, like I said, Microsoft Bookshelf. Okay, now Bob, uh, let's go back to the read-write optical storage device. That's a relatively new uh, yes, device for Sony. Right. Um, what do you see the particular use of, say, something like 650 uh, megabyte storage device like that? Well, I think there are a great number of uses for the PC user. Um, it has a lot of capacity, and in the 90s, when we start dealing with images, electronic images and multimedia programs, I think the capacity is very important. So it's not so much different technology as an extension of uh, the regular PC use. Um, we think that they're going to be larger and larger file sizes and digital images of video and so okay, on. Okay, so gra handling graphics is an important That's part. correct. Uh, can you show us some uh, graphics work? Yeah, I'll go to the rewritable disk and call up a file. We'll pick on the mouse and just simply <laughs> take a section of the mouse and move it over to demonstrate the ability to rewrite this. 
So we will save this file and we'll save it over the file that was on the five and a quarter before and we'll say yes to that. Now what we'll do is go back, it's just saved it off to that drive, reload the same file. Oops, I should first erase that. Now let's go back and reload that from the five and a quarter MO drive. And there's the mouse again, and you can see that yeah, we've stored yeah. it and recalled it. Well, some of the obvious questions are, uh, you know, uh, cost of uh, the media is going to be cheaper than hard disks. Uh, uh, we're talking about reliability, is an increase in reliability. What are the, uh, how are these issues sort of? The cost of the media is difficult to compare to hard disk mm -hmm. because one of the advantages of optical disk is it's removable. And so I can tell you that the five and a quarter MO is going to sell on the end user price approximately two hundred and fifty dollars. That's for six hundred and fifty megabytes. The cost for the 12 inch right ones will be about three hundred and fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. Now what about just reliability? Long term uh, being able to keep the data in Both and in so fact forth. are permanent forms of media but the right once right now is scheduled to be or estimated to be 100 years uh, life after accelerated testing. The accelerated testing on the five and a quarter MO drive has gone past 15 years and that's continuing. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, Rich, let's go back to your Head Start machine a minute. We were talking about price. Uh, what, what is that machine with the CD-ROM drive? Head Start 3 CD with the ROM retails right now for $29.95. Uh -huh. that and that's with the 40 megabyte drive, the VJ Modern, and the 686 CD-ROM disk drive. And what kind of software comes bundled with um, it? It comes with Grolier's Encyclopedia, Microsoft Bookshelf, Microsoft Stat, Stat Pack, PC Globe, CD Guide, and 30 various games. Okay, yeah, PC Globe, which is kind of interesting. Just yeah, we'll go into right now. And tell us what you're doing, Rich. Okay, I'm hitting enter. Um, oh, I'm going to insert the right CD first. <laughs> right. It's always a good thing to do. And what, what is PC Globe? What kind of program? It's a that? statistical and demographical program of various countries throughout the world. And we're just loading it right now. What about access time uh, on the CD-ROM compared to coming off a hard disk? Do we, do we know the answer to it's that? It's probably a couple hundred milliseconds. Uh -huh. Okay, what I can do now is I can activate or point and shoot, which I'll do. I can highlight a country. I can hit escape. I can go back and I can get data, database information about it. And it can give me various information. We'll go down here in Algeria. And it'll mm -hmm. give me various demographic yeah. information about the country. So useful in education, yeah. obviously. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. All right, Ridge Bob, thank you very much. At the beginning of the program, we saw some examples of interactive video disc applications. One of the most acclaimed applications teaches doctors to deal with trauma management. We have a report on that program now from the Oakland Naval Hospital. This realistic scenario of a battlefront hospital is part of a laser disc produced for the U.S. Navy. Health workers here at the Oakland Naval Hospital are challenged to decide the procedures, drugs, and diagnosis for five on-screen patients. Depending on their choices, made by interacting with PC-based software that runs the video disc, their patient will live or die. How's it going here? Uh, uh... Give me some gloves. Interactive video discs are increasingly showing up in medical schools and hospitals where split second timing and depth of knowledge must come automatically. This is a really great way for them to get prepared for going into the course. For going in, for instance, in this case, this is for the Advanced Trauma Life Support course. So this teaches them, it goes through a lot of the scenarios, it makes them make on the spot decisions in a, in a, in a, in a very short period of time. Uh, and so it prepares them with all the kind of scenarios that they need to go through with real live action, gives them feedback whether they're right or wrong, and actually probably a better way than we can do in our regular courses. Some are even predicting that by the mid-1990s, interactive video discs will be a part of tests that every doctor and nurse must take before getting certified. The medium is that effective in simulating real-life emergencies. And this is better because you're not having a patient's life in jeopardy, and you play the game and uh, you, if you make a mistake here, the patient doesn't suffer. For those making it to the end successfully, here's the reward. Lieutenant Clark, that was a nice job you did with that Marine. Matthews told me it was a tricky case, but that you picked up on his problems and handled them well. I just want you to know, I appreciate the work you did. In Oakland, California, for the Computer Chronicles, I'm Wendy Woods.
Joining us now in the studio is Alan Rinkus with the Conversant Media Group, and next to Alan, Rockley Miller, editor and publisher of the Video Disc Monitor. Now, Stuart, uh, Compact Disc Interactive CDI is one of those competing multimedia uh -huh. computer systems, and Alan has the CDI system, complete CDI system, here to demo for us. Uh, let's go right into the demonstration and see what CDI can do. Very good. Well, what we're going to be looking at is uh, an industrial application of CDI. Mm -hmm. CDI is uh, eventually destined to play in the home, so one of the applications we've come up with is to use it uh, to bring back a concept called the listening booth. It's placed in a kiosk uh, with a touch screen in record stores around the country. And each month, uh, the record industry gives us new albums to uh, create excerpts on. And uh, you select from a category, a uh, selected country here. And it's, let's see, there we go. And there it is. And when you get to an album that you'd like to hear, uh, you have three songs available to you very quickly. You select the song that you'd like. While you're listening to music over headphones, uh, images of that artist where they're on tour, uh, who's in the band, that sort of thing comes up. Uh, as well, you're able, the consumers vote on how they uh, like the song, and that market research is mm -hmm. then passed back to the uh, record companies. Well, and we've seen a couple of what I guess we'd call special effects here, the, uh, the fades and the dissolves, the wipes and so forth, and that's all a part of the CDI mechanism here, is uh, that true? That's, that's built into it, and it's used in to author the programs for okay, CDI applications. Now, Rockley, you've been in this business of, mo of well, video disc <laughs> monitor is, of course, the publication's been around ever since I can remember that optical storage has been important. Um, in your observations, how important is live video in, uh, in multimedia? Well, full motion video, and it's a twofold response to that. There's the real need in certain applications, but a lot can get along without it. And then there's the perceived need in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And people are used to having full motion when they're looking at a TV screen, and they think they need it. Uh -huh, okay. So <laughs> you've got to deliver what right. that end user thinks they need. So you think in, several, in many cases, slideshow uh, type mm -hmm. presentation is enough for training and education? It's, it's, it's great. Mm -hmm. But you know. people are used to television and they think they want video. Sure, mm -hmm. absolutely. Now, Alan, you're uh, starting another application now. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Well, this, I just wanted to show you how uh, CDI is uh, starting its approach into full motion video. Essentially, uh, the software algorithms to convert a CDI into full motion video are being developed and are fairly well along. Right now, we have partial uh, screen full motion video, which is used in a lot of business applications. And I just wanted to give you an example of that. Accompanied by audio, and this could be, uh, it's used in training, uh, banking applications, information programs to the general public. It, the full motion video, as Rockley points out, makes people comfortable. It's what they're used to when they see on TV. So it is, we are capable mm -hmm. of but doing But you feel like CDI. a partial screen at this point is uh, sufficient for the Quite a few business motion. applications. Mm -hmm. Within a year, it should be full, mo full motion, full screen, 72 minutes on a mm -hmm. single disc. And briefly, Alan, next to you, that is the CDI playback unit? Uh, that's correct. This is the industrial uh, unit. Uh, up here is the player, here is the computer system, and down here is an extension ch chassis uh, with a hard disk in it, uh, floppy disks, extended communications capability. And just as far as the uh, pricing, what, what would an end user price be eventually, and how long is that going to be? Under $1,000 in 1991, so it is a quite powerful combination of equipment. Okay, we'll check with you in a year. All right. Alan, thank you very much. That's a look at CDI in just a minute. We'll be back with DVI. Stay tuned. With us in the studio now is Rick Stauffer of Intel's Princeton Operation, and back with us, Rockley Miller of the Video Disc Monitor. Rockley, we were just talking about full motion. Uh, it's interesting to me to see that uh, DVI, Digital Video Interactive, that we're going to be talking about now, sort of has its roots really in video disc in a sense. What are your comments about that? What do you think about it? Is it video, digital, what's going on here? Well, with the DVI, it's, it came out of RCA's earlier CED efforts, mm -hmm. and as such, an analog kind of video world. But interestingly, it's now positioned more in the PC environment. It's become a sort of a computer originating technology, mm -hmm. as witnessed by its primary supporters with Intel, IBM, Microsoft, mm -hmm. all very much endorsing this format. Contrast that to CDI, which is coming down the consumer channel first and foremost, and backed by Philips, Mashusta, Sony, major com consumer types of okay. companies. Now, uh, Rick, you have an application here that shows full motion, right? Let's go ahead. And yes, I do. Part. I'll start. Yeah, one of the nice features about DVI is that today we can do full screen, full motion video at 30 frames per second. So let me start with just a short sequence to show you that we can do that from a CD-ROM. In this example, 
We are pulling data from a CD-ROM. Nine-tenths of the data is video data. One-tenth is audio data. Both are highly compressed. In fact, the video is compressed over 100 to 1, stored, and then decompressed on the fly. So that's pretty nice quality with less than 1% of the original data. Yeah. And then how many uh, minutes playback time do we have? So we could do 72 minutes of full screen, full motion video with audio from a CD-ROM. Okay, now, Rick, you have another application that you're going to load up in. Meanwhile, Rockley, uh, we, uh, what about the resolution? Uh, does DVI give us a resolution that we'd expect, say, out of a full well, it's a television, broadcast television picture now? Well, with DVI, resolution is going to be an evolutionary type of mm -hmm. thing. Because it's, it's uh, algorithmic based, improvements in both the chipsets and the new algorithms will allow them to improve that over time. Okay. So that's going to change. And then uh, Rick will eventually be able to have high definition TV, right? A few years down the road, it will be high definition interactive, that's correct. All right. Now what is the application? Okay, chip? I'm going to show you a little prototype application of a point of sale application for a travel agency. Here you could bring up a menu and uh, be able to select from several different cities across the United States. Uh, let's say we wanted to take a look at Washington before uh, deciding to travel there. We could then get some vi motion video here, shot from the Washington Monument to take a look at the mall. That would get me pretty excited about going there. <laughs> so you see this as, as an industrial application, travel agencies Initially, having this in their office? Yes, exactly. Initially we'll be looking at industrial applications. Welcome to our nation's capital, uh -huh. Washington, D.C. And then we'll move into the desktop, mainstream office desktop, bringing video into the desktop. Mm -hmm. Now here we can select on different icons and we'll take a look at the Jefferson Memorial just to get me excited about going to Washington. <laughs> so you can see how we can combine graphics yeah. and full motion video in this kind of an application. Do you see this as an end user product then too eventually as we heard about the CDN? Yeah, exactly. We can move these electronics down to a low price point for the home as well. But our initial focus is the office yeah. desktop. Rick, what's the box here that this is all running out of, this mystery okay. box? Yeah, this is our first product based on DVI. It's our application development platform. It allows mm -hmm. software developers to create applications using motion video, audio, and still images. So then a software developer then would uh, be able to capture their own images and then do some uh, uh, testing and so forth. Exactly. Now how, do, now how do they actually do the compression? Okay, there are the two ways form. to get compressed video into the system today. Mm -hmm. One is using an offline process that uses larger computers and op operates in non-real time. Uh, we also have a real-time video compression process that we can use with this box that allows us to take video into the files uh, immediately mm -hmm. by the developer. Okay. Rick Rockley, thank you very much. That's our look at optical storage. We'll be back in just a minute with this week's computer news. In the random access file this week, Zenith has announced it's now shipping a new 386 PC based on the extended industry standard architecture. Zenith claims it's the first company to actually ship an ESA computer, though many other manufacturers have announced products. The Zenith model features 33 megahertz speed and a new disk controller rated at 15 times faster than standard controllers, with an access time under one millisecond. Despite the new ESA computer, Zenith also recently announced its support for IBM's MCA bus. Compaq has introduced a new 386 model which comes standard with two megabytes of RAM and the higher end Compaq 386s are now being shipped with four megabytes. The company says the upgrades are in recognition of memory demanding environments such as Unix, Windows, OS2 and DeskView. Commodore is entering the 386 field with several new models using the top of the line 25 megahertz 8386DX chip. The Commodore machine is called a PC60. It ships with two megabytes of memory, nine slots, a hard drive, and two floppy drives for both size disks. The PCs are made in Germany. Price is expected to be around $6,000. The National Institute of Standards and Technology has issued a warning for owners of laser printers. The agency says the printers are very susceptible to power surges even if you have a surge protector installed. The institute says power surges can damage data communication circuits in the printer and suggests power surge protection devices be installed between the computer and the printer. Time to look at software and for this week's review here is Paul Schindler. I wouldn't think of trying to fix hardware without a toolkit, and you shouldn't think of trying to fix software without one either. In this case, HDC Windows Manager. It's a useful kit full of utility programs which enhance Microsoft's popular Windows environment. Some of the tools, like the Memory Viewer, are straightforward. It gives you a display of memory in use and available. 
there's the alarm clock that provides a constant date and time display in your choice of formats, with the ability to set up to three alarms at one time. The font viewer allows you to see what each font looks like. Screensaver can be invoked in a variety of patterns. You can use the Work Sets option to load and position a set of programs you use for a specific task on the screen, or close all windows at once to end your session. There's even a cute pop-up game called Rocks to divert you. To keep all these utilities available, they can be stored as icons while you're working on another program, but be careful, too many icons slows Windows down a lot. Windows Managers costs $80 from HDC Computer Corporation in Redmond, Washington. At that price, it's a real bargain. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. In our software top 10 this week, PC Connection reports these are the best-selling titles for PC compatibles. Leading the list, again, is TurboTax from Chipsoft, followed by Quicken, WordPerfect 5.1, the new flight simulator, and new on the top 10 this week, Andrew Tobias's Tax Cut. Also on the bestseller list, DataStorm's Procom Plus, PC Tools Deluxe, the Peter Norton Advanced Utilities, the new version of Microsoft Works, and fifth generation's Fastback Plus. Expertec Corporation has announced a new software product called No Peak. It enables you to hide the display on your computer screen at the touch of a key. The program is designed to protect confidential work from the prying eyes of people who stroll into your office. You can get the display back on the screen by entering a password. No Peak costs only $19.95. The Smithsonian Institution has announced a new permanent computer exhibit due to open this May. The Information Technology Exhibit will feature a variety of computer displays showing off new and old hardware and software. The exhibit will also focus on the changes in society caused by the information age. Finally, there will actually be an Apple computer soon, or rather a computer Apple. Researchers at Michigan State have developed a tiny computer that fits inside a three and a half inch sphere the size of an apple. The spherical computer Apple will be mixed in with real apples. Its sensors will then keep track of all the bumps and bruises it gets from the orchard to the supermarket. The experiment is designed to discover the cause of fruit damage, which costs apple growers millions of dollars each year. That's it for this week's Chronicles. We'll see you next time. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, which reminds you that software is produced by people whose income is derived from legitimate software sales. Software piracy is a federal offense. When a few people steal software, everyone loses. Additional funding is provided by Byte Magazine and BIX, the Byte Information Exchange, by PC Connection and Mac Connection, and by Intel Corporation, Personal Computer Enhancement. For a transcript of this week's Computer Chronicles, send $4 to PTV Publications, Post Office Box 701, Kent, Ohio, 44240. Please indicate program date.